Hey guys! So, if you've ever enviously looked at passengers getting on cruise ships, maybe you're imagining their amazing vacation on the endless oceans. Well, that's no surprise, since modern cruise ships have almost everything for an expensive, elite vacation, including restaurants, bars, pools, gyms, and yeah, even tennis courts. And the magnificent interior of the cabin simply exudes luxury. But while vacationing in these conditions, people often forget that, uh, yeah, they're still in the open ocean, and their lives are under much greater threat than those in a five-star hotel on land. The ocean's pretty rough, and can sometimes be a force of nature capable of destroying whatever is in its path. It's also capable of ruining your romantic vision of expensive vacations, like taking a cruise for hundreds or thousands of miles. So, this happened recently to the Norwegian cruise ship Escape that ran into a powerful storm in the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, although modern cruise ships are prepared to run into strong storms and advertise high safety measures, even they aren't always able to withstand nature. So, this event happened to the Escape on March 3rd, 2019, just a few hours after departing from New York. So, meteorologists couldn't quite predict the weather for the cruise ship's path, since the ocean is becoming more unpredictable due to global warming, of course. Well, everything started off well. Thousands of passengers went to the restaurants, walking along the decks, and were taking pictures. Suddenly, the multi-ton ship started seriously rocking and creaking due to the violent seas. The strong waves were gradually destroying the interior. Passengers were shocked above all else by the sound of exploding glass, the chaos of flying furniture on the interior decks, as well as the screams of injured passengers during the storm, making the event seem even more horrifying. Almost all of the passengers started panicking, and some even recorded videos of what was happening that they later uploaded, of course, to social media. In just 40 seconds, a video taken by a passenger during the mayhem made it clear to many how terrible it really is to be on a ship during such a catastrophe similar to the famous tragedy of the Titanic. Now, according to American rescuers, only the ship's interior was damaged during the storm and no passengers or crew were found dead. An unbelievable stroke of fortune considering the winds were up to 93 miles an hour. A few people needed to go to the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries once the unlucky ship returned to port. Our next piece of evidence on how helpless even the most powerful pieces of human technology are compared to the wrath of nature is the Norwegian cruise ship Breakaway that ran into the storm Grayson, also called Bomb Cyclone. A cruise liner from Norwegian Cruise Line was completing a trip of the Western Atlantic and became a true nightmare for three days for its passengers, which included several millionaires. Now, the ship set sail on a week-long cruise from New York to the Bahamas. However, there was a strong hurricane in its way. The winds reaching speeds of 87 miles an hour rocked the ship, knocking people off their feet and making them hold on to furniture or stairs while dishes flew off the shelves. But all of this could have been avoidable if only the overly daring captain didn't decide to travel from the Bahamas to New York through the storm and turn a vacation from a tropical paradise into a cruise through hell. Suddenly, the 1,070-foot liner tilted, and a giant wave broke on the decks in the following seconds. It swept through the entire ship, washing away lounge chairs and flipping boats over. The exits to the deck were closed, but the water on board got everywhere. It ran into the elevator shafts, flooding the hallways, of course, the entertainment facility stopped working. The staff tried everything to get rid of the water. It was soaked up with extra blankets, towels, and even robes, but it still didn't help. Passengers on the Norwegian breakaway uploaded video reviews of their vacation of them falling asleep in hallways, fearing the water everywhere. Some of them even spent three days in life vests on the ship, fearing they would sink. Others didn't leave their rooms because of seasickness and, of course, express their displeasure where everyone does nowadays on Twitter. I'll never sail on the Norwegian breakaway again. It was the worst cruise. 
All we were told was the towboats couldn't get to the cruise company's private island, and we just went back. There was no information for over three days, just scary waves. Our whole family was sick, and we were locked inside the rocking ship. It was terrible. In the end, the ship survived the storm, but the passengers didn't have a good experience on the vacation, to say the least. In February 2005, the cruise ship Grand Voyager, with 474 passengers, set sail from Tunis to Barcelona. Now, despite the weather forecast predicting the cyclone with the gentle name Valentina, and as a result, the strong winds and high waves on the ship's path, the captain didn't decide to change course. This resulted in the Voyager hitting a zone with strong northwest winds blowing near the Balearic Islands. After a few hours, the storm increased to an 11-point storm on the Beaufort scale, which is used by sailors, of course, to define the conditions at sea. 11 points out of 12 on the scale is, as you may have guessed, a violent storm, with winds reaching speeds of 64 to 72 miles an hour and the average height of waves over 37 and up to 52 feet. Even nuclear aircraft carriers hide in such weather. So no one, of course, was able to go for a swim and the water movement created a terrifying image. The passengers were told to strictly stay in their rooms unless absolutely necessary, which of course is the right thing to do. However, looking out your window on the third level and then the ship goes under the water and back out, well, it creates the feeling that maybe the next submersion might be the last. On the morning of February 14th, the crew estimated the waves were 30 to 46 feet high. There was broken glass on the decks, three of the four engines weren't working, and the life support and control systems stopped functioning. After that, the captain set out an SOS signal and several rescue ships headed to the Grand Voyager. However, the storm was still raging, which significantly complicates the rescue operation. According to the representatives of the French Coast Guard, communication with the Voyager was done using Morse code, indicating how bad of a situation the ship was in. The engine failure was especially dangerous. A ship that can't move can't be steered in water. This can result in the ship flipping over, leading to tragic consequences. Additionally, the ship was dangerously close to underwater rocks, making the situation even tenser. Luckily, by the evening of the 14th, the engineers got one more engine online, letting the ship reach speeds of 11 miles an hour. A day later, the cruise ship and two rescue ships made it to the Calgary port in Sardinia. 20 passengers received minor injuries in the ordeal, and the interior of the ship was significantly damaged. Witnesses described the ship's interior as absolute chaos and destruction. Now, in late March of 2019, passengers on the 755-foot-long cruise ship Viking Sky ran into difficulties off the western coast of Norway. The ship had about 1,300 passengers and crew on board. The ship sent out a distress signal after it started drifting towards land. Now, if you think passengers were relieved to see land, you'd be mistaken. The captain and crew miraculously were able to get an engine online and drop anchor about one and a half miles off the coast. Now, the wind speeds in the region where the ship was reached about 62 miles an hour, and the waves were 13 to 16 feet high. Now, the storm wasn't the strongest one, but the main problem was the ship couldn't move on its own and risked running aground and flipping over, repeating the fate of the unlucky Costa Concordia. Additionally, passengers can't be evacuated in those conditions because their lifeboats might flip over. Rescuers decided to use helicopters for evacuation. Several passengers later said they survived the worst flight in their lives. Rescue services got 479 people to land by air, one at a time on helicopters, before the weather got better and the ship could be towed. The low level of oil in the reservoirs was to blame, which led to an emergency shutdown of the engines at the worst time. Now, that didn't make it easier on the passengers who went through panic attacks. 
Several of them required seeing a psychologist after returning to land. So this happened in the Norwegian Bodo, an area considered one of the windiest areas in Scandinavia. The captain of the huge cruise ship, the MS Nordnorg, decided to take the ship to a necessary break in the harbor because of the storm's threat. The experienced captain's delicate work was filmed from the piers. He flawlessly moored the ship despite the waves and wind. The captain's confidence does make sense, though. The Nordnorg once sailed to Antarctica, and its durability made that and much more possible. After the weather cleared up and the ship set sail again, some passengers decided that they'd rather stop ashore there. They'd had enough of an extreme vacation already. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like and comment. Let me know what your, uh, your worst travel story is. Hopefully it's better than the ones you uh, saw today. And we'll see you again next time.